Hello everybody and welcome back. In this lecture we're going to have a look at duplication. Now you may already know about duplication in Blender or you may be in a position where you're thinking adding all of these cubes all the time and manipulating their shapes, their transform and changing it to something and then doing exactly the same thing again, isn't that a bit wasteful? Surely there's a quicker way of doing things. Well there is. You may have already tried copying and pasting. So let's select my cube here. Go Control and C to copy and Control and V to paste. And would you know it, we've got another cube. If we look in the outliner, we've got cube 001. Let's go ahead and select that and I'm going to delete it from my scene. Let's go ahead and make this cube the right height. Let's mimic Stonehenge from before and see if we can make it much more efficiently than we've done before. So the dimensions, let's go in straight away and set the dimensions to what it was before. So before we've even faffed around with scaling, we can just come in, bang, got the dimensions correct. Now we can apply that scale and I can move it up on the Z axis by two units. So it's on the ground plane notionally. Okay, now that that's there, I want to duplicate it. And there are two types of duplication. We can go to object, and as we scroll down, we can see here we've got duplicate objects and duplicate linked. There's a slight difference between the two. Duplicate objects, or Shift and D, will duplicate an object, as the name suggests, and its properties, and it will make a new object. It won't be linked to the old object at all. And duplicate linked, which is our second option here with Alt and D, will be a duplicate object, but it remains linked to the original. So if we change something about the original, it will affect the duplicate. So let's do a couple of these so we can play around and see the impact. So I'm going to go Shift and D, and I can move that along. In fact, I'm going to do that movement by looking from the side, pressing G. Oh, snapping's not turned on. Let's turn it on manually by pressing control whilst we're moving and pop it there. So we've done that bit straight away. I now want to go Alt and D for a linked duplicate. I'm going to lift it up to the top. Again, I'm going to hold down snapping. Not quite in the right place. Well, I can hold down shift at the same time and I can eyeball its transform and get it in the right location. It may also be just as easy to type in the values if you need it. Now, because we're rotating around the global x-axis, we can put 90 degrees in there and it's there. And of course, we need to go ahead and apply that rotation for the moment. And we get our first issue. We cannot apply a multi-user object. Now, th there's a reason behind this, because if I go ahead and apply the rotation, it would actually twist around the original object. If I scale this up and apply, it will scale up the other one. So there's a reason why we cannot do that. And you will end up in a position at some point where you've linked all these things together and you just cannot apply the transform. If this does happen to you, what you will need to do is go to the properties window where we were looking at the object data. Now go down to the upside down green triangle, the object data properties. And we will dive into these object data properties in much more depth in the following section. But for the moment, we've got the number two up here. This says how many users of that mesh data we have. And because we had a linked duplicate, which means if we change any of that mesh data, the other one also changes, we now have the number two there. So I'm going to click that number two. That will make a unique user. Now we can go ahead and apply that rotation. Let's hide the properties panel out of the way for the moment. So you can see here, that was incredibly powerful. We were able to create this object far, far quicker than just adding cubes and manipulating them all the time. But even better, what I want to do now is highlight all of these. Now notice that the lamp is with, it's, it's not actually part of the selection box, but we've got a line coming down from it which is causing it to be selected. So let's rotate our view slightly so we can only select these. We can also turn off selection of objects and we'll talk about that towards the end of this section. But now we've got all of these selected, I can look at this from the top and duplicate it with Shift and D, position it over here, rotate it round. I can duplicate it again, rotate it round. So this is a very manual process 
but very quickly you can probably see where we're getting here i can select them all again rotate them around position them and we've got stonehenge that was so much quicker being able to duplicate things especially in this case where we just want placeholders i will emphasize that we don't want photorealistic models at the moment this is all we're going for but look at that you've got stonehenge and of course you can now go in and perhaps rotate some of these individually and make it look a bit more organic once you've got the base there you can start playing with it that is awesome and I'm going to leave that lecture here on duplication. You can see the power of it. You can very quickly create either scenes or objects very quickly, especially if they've got repetition in them by duplication. So that's it for this lecture, and I'll see you all in the next one.